Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the program. Today's episode is brought to you by Performance Inspired Nutrition, PI-Nutrition.com. And you may say, Steve, who is Performance Inspired Nutrition for? I'm going to tell you, it is for everyone. Performance Inspired has created a line of products that are compatible with everyone's health and fitness goals, whether you are undergoing intense training at the competition level or simply looking to take small steps towards a healthier you, Performance Inspired Nutrition has the products for use. If you want to lose weight, you've got weight loss goals, I'm here to tell you from personal experience, they can help you. Their supplements support an active lifestyle, which is an important uh, component of working towards a weight loss goal. Nutritionally, ensuring that your body is fueled properly will help enhance your metabolism, improve your mental function, and give you the endurance needed for fat-burning workouts. Also, their clean protein supplements are a healthy option to satisfy your appetite, helping combat mindless snacking or unhealthy indulgences, which was my problem. I personally, every morning, take the whey protein. I take a cup of it. I mix it with eight ounces of water. I use my PI nutrition uh, shaker cup and I shake it up and I drink it. It keeps me full all day. I don't feel the necessity to snack. I don't want sweets because I feel full all day long. If you want to gain weight and muscle, you really want to get in the gym and it's that summertime and you want to have that six pack or that eight pack that I will honestly never have, then yes, performance inspired is for you too, because in order for you to be successful in your gain goals, you must be fueling your body correctly. Supplements from PI Nutrition allow you to get your body's target needs, putting you on the path to success in the gym. Their products include a protein supplement specifically intended for those looking to maximize their gains. You need a daily multi, uh, multivitamin? They have it. You want zinc to keep your immune system strong, especially in these times? They've got it. Collagen and beauty support? They have it. If you're on the keto diet, They've got keto diet products for you as well. It's all right there for you at pi-nutrition.com. Performance inspired nutrition from Mark Wahlberg and Tom Dowd, as well as Marcus Luttrell. Uh, you can find out the entire story of why they started Performance Inspired right there on the website. And I think they will inspire you to be better. Don't forget, anytime you want to buy something, enter code Steve at checkout. You're going to get 10% off and any order over $74, I think you get free shipping. So start on a healthier path to a better and more active lifestyle. Lose the weight, get in shape, but do it with healthy, all natural products from Performance Inspired. That's pi-nutrition.com. We're also brought to you by ArtistDevelopmentAcademy.com, where if you are a singer, songwriter, artist, producer, engineer, and you want to take your career to the next level, I'm talking about making money with your music. I'm not talking about getting famous. Uh, big difference there. We started the Artist Development Academy to help you take your music to the next level, to learn how to monetize your music, learn how to develop yourself so that you're not paying all these amounts of money to all these different sharks that are in the music business. You can learn right there at artistdevelopmentacademy.com. Learn from the best. Learn from hit songwriters, uh, multi-platinum selling producers, Grammy nominees, Grammy winners, uh, CSAC Songwriters of the Year. Uh, you can learn everything you need to know, whether you want to learn about audio production, songwriting, artist development, our members get access to our entire online catalog of courses, plus you get a brand new online course every month, and this month is all about YouTube and how to succeed and make money in your music career by using YouTube. We give you all the secrets. You get a brand new course every month, plus you get access to the members-only forum where you can connect with people, other members from all over the world. You can find co-writers, post your work for feedback, anything and everything you want to do to get the information, get the access, get the guidance to grow your career is right there at artistdevelopmentacademy.com. Um, right now and, and forever, I guess, really, there are two ways to join. You can become an all access member by an annual membership. Or you can simply pay monthly. Either way you want to go, I'm giving you 30% off for just listening to this podcast. So when you go to artistdevelopmentacademy.com and you choose to become a member, when you get to the checkout page, enter code Steve, and you're going to get 30% off. 
And the cost is less than half. Actually, it's less than a quarter of the cost of a cup of Starbucks coffee every day. And I promise you what you're going to learn is going to help take you to the next level. I could sit here and read the comments of our members telling you just how amazing the courses have been for them and the connection and meeting other people and having the access to industry insiders. You can find all of that at the website for yourself. Go check it out. Save 30% by entering code Steve at checkout at Artist Development Academy. Dot com. On today's episode of the podcast, I have told you before, I listen to you, I get your emails, and I thought it was time that we open up the mailbag and we answer some questions from you guys. Some of it has to do with distribution. Some of it has to do with, I just want to be a songwriter. Is that even viable? Can I do that? Some of it has to do with social media ads and how to run those and create uh, strategies and plans that get your music out there and get it heard. That's what we're talking about today on the Steve Freeman Podcast. You're listening to the Steve Freeman Podcast, the real raw truth about the pursuit of success in Music, business, and life. Here's your host, hit songwriter, multi-platinum selling producer, and serial entrepreneur, Steve Freeman. Best music biz podcast out there. Steve tells it like it is, and as a Jersey girl living in Nashville, I've been living for it. I found the podcast and his ADA, which is the Artist Development Academy, at the beginning of the quarantine, and it's helped me step my game up when I needed it most. Listen, follow his advice, take charge of your band and amp career, and you will start to find success, even in baby steps. I look forward to the pod every week. Thanks for being you. Dakota, thank you for leaving the review on Apple Podcast. I would love everybody listening, go to Apple Podcast or iTunes and leave us a written review. Rate us five stars, just like uh, Dakota Lee did. We appreciate it. We will continue featuring them here on the podcast. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm loving it. We've got some really big things coming up, some amazing special guests coming up next week. uh, We're going to have Seattle Seahawks tight end Jacob Hollister. Uh, is going to be joining us. We're talk about football. We're going to talk about COVID. Plus, he is an excellent singer songwriter. We're going to talk about music with him. Uh, so great matchup, you know, of football and uh, music. My two favorite things uh, in life. So next week, that's going to be great. Jacob Hollister, uh, uh, tight end for the Seattle Seahawks. He will uh, be joining us today. I wanted to talk about and answer some questions that you guys have. Um, Each week, I would probably say I get somewhere between two and 300 emails uh, from you guys asking questions. And when I start to see that there are questions that are coming up as a result of some of the episodes we've done here of the podcast, or whether the YouTube videos or anything like that, and I start to get a handful that sound exactly alike or that are pretty much asking the same thing. Every once in a while, I'd like to put an episode together uh, that answers those questions Uh, for you guys. And because I think it's helpful. I think a lot of you have a lot of these same questions. Um, I try to, (laughs) as best I can, figure out what you guys want to know, and I want to incorporate them into episodes of the podcast. But I love it when you guys reach out to me and you ask these questions. So if you've got something that you want answered, you want me to put it in the pile for one of these type episodes, uh, go to thestevefreeman.com and contact me. Uh, enter the, There's a contact form there. There's a button there. You can email me. Uh, and, and in the subject line, just put question for the podcast. And that way, I can put it in a special folder that I have, and I can pop these things up. And every once in a while, maybe once or twice a month, we'll do an episode where I answer your questions. Because that this part of it is the most important thing to me is being able to help you guys, help you move forward and get you the answers uh, that you really need uh, for your career that are that are honest in real world. Uh, And that's what I think you guys listen for. So uh, let's get started. Uh, Our first email uh, comes from Jalen McMillan. I hope these people don't mind me saying their names. I might should have asked first, but this comes from Jalen McMillan. He says, hey, Steve, love your podcast, man. If you have a second, could you share more information about running successful Snapchat and Facebook ads to gain Spotify streams? I invest about $850 per week in online SEO, building my brand, et cetera. 
And uh, I think it may be a smart idea to invest a portion of that back into Spotify. I checked out one of your videos where you've been able to see hundreds of thousands of streams. So I'd like to learn and copy your success. Uh, new record coming out next month and looking uh, into running a successful campaign. Um, okay, Jalen, let me let me start here. Um, if you're spending eight hundred and fifty dollars per week, I'm assuming that you you typed exactly what you meant to say, and that's per week and not per month. I would redirect. You said, you know, possibly redirect some of that. I would redirect a hundred percent of it. When it comes to the entertainment business, and it comes to specifically music business. It is different than any other kind of business out there. If you were in the business and selling a more uh, traditional, let's say, product, then SEO is very important. For those of you that don't know, SEO is search engine optimization. If you were selling windows or T-shirts or watches or socks or shoes or uh, another hard item, if you will, then SEO is very important to make sure that you stand out above the clutter that's out there trying to sell either the same or similar products. SEO is very important. When it comes to the music business, in my experience over the last 20, 25 years, any time that we have put significant amounts of money into SEO, it has not shown a return. And I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say one of the reasons that you emailed me is because I don't think you're seeing the kind of results that you would like to see based on the fact that you're spending $850 a week on SEO. I can promise you that if you take 100% of that budget and you apply it differently, I can promise you that you are going to start seeing results. You're going to start seeing your follower numbers go up. You're going to start seeing your stream counts go up. Whether if you're putting stuff up on YouTube, you're going to see your views go up. If it were me, I would take that $850 per week and I would look at Facebook ads, I would look at Instagram story ads. Um, I would look at YouTube ads, not Google SEO, but actually ads through YouTube. I would look at YouTube ads. Then I would also look at Spotify ads. Now, I don't know if if very many of you know this at all. and it's, Everybody may know it. But you have the ability to advertise directly with Spotify. You don't have to go through an agency. You don't have to go through anybody else. Anyone... And I will put a link in the show notes um, that you click on this link. It takes you straight to the Spotify advertising dashboard where you can create uh, your own profile. You create an account. Uh, you can upload the ad that you want to run. You could create your own ad. They're even doing video ads now. Um, you can create your ad, upload it and have it run even down to the the extent to where you can choose what playlist, what artists, uh, what genres you want that ad to appear in or in front of. So let's say you are a hip hop artist and you've got this new ad and you hear these ads. Those of you that don't pay for Spotify premium like me, um, you hear the ads all the time. Well, the ads are the same thing. You can do yourself an ad where it's like, hey, I'm Jalen McMillan. I'd love for you to check out my brand new single right here on Spotify. Swipe up to listen now or click the link to listen to my brand new single right now. And you can put, you know, in, in the background of your ad, put some of your some of the music to kind of get people excited about it. Then you can choose to place that ad directly in front of the people in the playlists that are most like your music. So if you're a hip hop artist, you can put those ads on hip hop playlists that play where your music fits in best. And really, in all honesty, Spotify advertising is uh, is very it's it's not really expensive. It's pretty cost effective. And especially if you're spending eight hundred and fifty dollars a week, let's just call that nine times four. That's thirty six. If you're spending thirty six hundred dollars a month, you can take twenty uh, percent of that $3,600 and you're going to get a lot of coverage. Uh, you're going to gain a lot of monthly listeners. You're going to gain a lot of attention for both you as an artist, the single that or EP that you're promoting. Um, that's going to pay off for you because we've talked in the past, trying to advertise to sell music, selling music is over. You're not going to sell music unless you have a very large fan base. And I would assume that nobody listening to this has, except for a couple of people, <laughs> have very, very, very large fan bases. 
I would utilize, I would take that $3,600, I would take 20% of it and I would put it directly towards Spotify ads. Come up with three or four different ads that all point to the single, the EP or the album that you're going to upload or have uploaded already onto Spotify and watch the numbers work for you. So put some of that money into directly advertising with Spotify. When it comes to Facebook um, and Instagram, for those of you that don't know, Facebook owns Instagram. Um, you never boost posts. I, I keep telling people this um, all the time. And every time I, I work with somebody, they, well, we've been boosting posts. Well, then, number one, you're obviously not fucking listening to the podcast. Stop boosting posts. It doesn't really do much at all. Boosting a post, even though you can select your demographics and you can select, you know, the, the, a little bit of customization is who do you want to see this ad? The majority of where that gets served are to your followers that already like your page that don't normally see your content. And that's about 80% of it. If you want to run, successful Facebook and Instagram story ads. You go through the ads manager and you create an ads account and that's where you create your ad. That's where you can exactly like with Spotify, you can go in and create this ad. You can have your different size ads so that it is the right size. It's, you know, 1920 by 1080 or, or whatever it is, 1280 by 720 uh, for Facebook. But then you can also choose to run that ad on Instagram and Instagram stories. Uh, and th that, of course, is a different uh, different size uh, for Instagram feeds. It's 1920 by 1080 or a version of 4K that's downscaled uh, for Instagram stories. It's the opposite. It is 1080 by 1920. So you can create the artwork that matches the platform in which you want to advertise. Now, I will tell you, in the advertising campaigns that we run and that we have run in the past and we will run in the future, we did not see a very good return when it comes to uh, advertising on Instagram feeds. The most, especially when it comes to turning into Spotify spins and Spotify listeners and followers on Spotify. The one thing we have found that has been more successful than anything is Instagram story ads. So you can go into Facebook ad manager and you can create an ad and then you can select where you want that ad to show and run and where you do not. If you want to run an Instagram story ad, just make sure that when you go under destinations that you uncheck everything except Instagram stories. So whenever you set and create your budget for that, uh, that program, that ad, that campaign, it's going to maximize all of the money that you have dedicated to that campaign to purely run on Instagram stories. What we have found is that the cost versus value ratio for Instagram story ads is better than any other platform out there. It is better than regular ads on Facebook. Facebook has almost gotten to the point where even though you can go in and do highly targeted, geo-targeted, interest-targeted and based ads, they just don't perform as well as Instagram story ads. But when you run these Instagram story ads, you still are able to do the demographics, the geographics, uh, the genres, the interest-based things. You can place uh, that ad on Instagram stories uh, on specific people's uh, feeds. So if people are following uh, these 250, 300 people, you can make sure that those people see your ads. Uh, that, of course, is a great, we follow that philosophy every single time with every artist. It's an association process where if you like for working with a, a R and B or hip hop artist, rap artist, let's just say, and uh, we, it's a lot like Drake, or we think they, they share a lot of similarities, then we might run Instagram story ads for that artist in their new project um, against Drake fans, the people that follow Drake. There's only, you know, what, 16 billion of them. Um, but in saying that, I will also say that as, as close as you can drill down, the better off you're going to be. One of the other features that we've been using the last six to eight months, and I use this for the podcast as well, is creating lookalike audiences within the Facebook ads manager. What you can do is you can go in and enter your Instagram account, and it will go through and you can create a lookalike audience from people that engage with your content on the various platforms that we're talking about Instagram. So we'll talk about Instagram. You can create a lookalike audience 
Um, that is not the people that follow you and engage with you on Instagram, but it's people that are like them and have the same habits, like a lot of the same uh, pages and engage with a lot of the same type of posts as what you post. This gets your message, it gets your music, it gets you as an artist out there in front of people who are more likely to like you because they share a lot of similarities with the people that do like you and that do follow you and that do engage with your audience. Now, going back to your amount, we're going to say you're spending $3,600 a month. I'm telling you right now, your world will change if you take $3,600 and you start putting it into Instagram story ads. Same thing goes with Snapchat, with TikTok, all of the different platforms. Those platforms are going to do better than basic Facebook feed ads and Instagram feed ads. The main reason that, especially for Instagram, stories do better when the ad is good. So if you have a good ad that doesn't necessarily look like an ad, but it, it looks intriguing, people are, are the, the research shows that they watch it longer, even though it's only 15 seconds. Or if it's 30 seconds, it's broken into two. Or if it's 60 seconds, it's broken into four. Uh, the more engaging you can make that ad, the better it's going to be. The research shows when you do advertising on Instagram, and you you choose to advertise on the feed, same thing with Facebook. People are just using that thumb. They're just scrolling. And if some, if they see something that they like, they will stop. And then they start scrolling again. It's a little bit different uh, with Instagram stories. I think if you take your money and you put it into that, you, you take, say, 20% of that budget or even 30%, and you do Spotify ads directly with Spotify, And then I think you take the rest of that money and you look at Instagram story ads, but then also look at doing YouTube ads. I don't think a lot of you understand how powerful of a platform that YouTube is. That's why right now I'm I'm wrapping up this new course for the Artist Development Academy on on YouTube for musicians. It's going to tell you everything you need and want to know about how to do YouTube properly from the gear you need to use, audio, and video down to posting your videos, when you should upload your videos, how you should shoot. It's everything because I don't think a lot of people understand. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, second only to their parent company, Google. For music, it's number one. So people are going to YouTube to find music that they like. Running a 20 or 30 second YouTube ad in front of channels or on channels that you know, again, are similar to your music. If you're a pop artist, if you're a female pop artist, and you think that you might share a fan base, or if somebody that likes Selena Gomez might like your music, or if you're in country, somebody, you know, you're a Jason Aldean type, you can literally go in and make sure that your advertising appears on channel that feature those artists. You, you can't get any better than that. You are placing your ads in front of extremely targeted demographics that share a lot of things in common and that are similar with the audience that you A, already have, or B, the audience that you really want to grow. Think about this. The $3,600 take, again, 20 30%. Put it directly into direct advertising directly with Spotify. Then take, I don't know, 40 to 50% and put that directly into Instagram story ads. And in those Instagram story ads, make sure that when you, 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 whatever message you want to have to swipe up to listen or whatever, all those options are built into the ad building platform that you insert the link to that single, that EP or that album on Spotify so that when they swipe up, it's automatically going to open Spotify. Here's the other thing. You can also do Apple Music as well, and you can create an ad but have different ad sets. So maybe one ad sends people directly to Spotify. The other ad sends people directly to Apple Music. All of this is, is, is able to be done within the Facebook Ads Manager. You can even choose like the ad that you want to send people to stream your music on Apple Music. You can even select that this ad only runs on people with iOS devices. The, the ad that you run for Spotify, since a lot of Apple users still use Spotify, but a lot of Android users use Spotify as well because it's more native, then that one can go to either iOS users or Android users. I'm telling you, when you get into this world 
of advertising and promoting, which, by the way, this is exactly what the labels are doing. And that's what I've been preaching for so long. You guys have the ability to put every marketing effort that the major labels do that they have at their disposal. It is all at your disposal. Now, I understand that they may have an endless checkbook and you don't have that endless checkbook. But in Jalen's case, if you're spending $3,600 a month on advertising and on marketing, then you should be seeing overwhelming results. You should be having your expectations met as long as they're anywhere in the ballpark of normal and reasonable. But that type of budget, I but trust me, I know a lot of artists that spend half of that budget and do have hundreds of thousands of streams that are driving uh, that traffic from Instagram story ads or Facebook ads, Snapchat, Spotify, sending people directly to finding their music on the streaming platforms. And it's turning into average monthly listeners. It's turning into uh, individual stream numbers. It is working. It works because this is what every major label on the face of the planet is doing. So Jalen, I think you have the right idea. Number one, I like the fact that you've done what you needed to do in order to have a marketing budget, because I will say it again. The marketing budget is more important than the music. We as creatives, we focus so much on the quality of the music and the lyrics and all. none of it fucking matters. And as a guy who's written hit songs and considers myself a songwriter first, um, it hurts me to say that. It really does. It, it pisses me off every time I have to say it, but I have to wake up and I have to face the truth. A great song, the greatest song of all time without a marketing budget is just a song in somebody's fucking drawer. That's what it boils down to. So I like the fact that you are approaching this the right way and you've allocated uh, and done whatever you had to do to make sure that you have the money to properly market your music right now. I feel like you're putting in that putting that money in completely the wrong place. Um, search engine optimization for the music business uh, is not good. You are not going to get the kind of results uh, that you're looking for. It is not going to lead to more streams, more followers, more average monthly listeners. It's not going to lead to any of that. But when you hit people where they live and on the device in which they live, the better you're going to be. Your Facebook ads, Instagram story ads, direct Spotify advertising, and YouTube, that is the way that you want to go, my friend. Thank you so much for your email. I appreciate you sending it in. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Next one, we are going to go to uh, Justin Jones. Justin writes and says, Hello, Mr. Freeman. My name is Justin. I'm a 24-year-old songwriter from Mississippi, and I have been sending emails to 10 different Nashville publishers and have not heard back from any of them. So I was wondering if you know any publishers who are looking for writers and willing to do a co-pub deal. Um, First of all, Justin, if you haven't seen it, there is a video on my YouTube channel um, that is, I'm almost positive the title of it is uh, how to contact record labels and music publishers. Um, Go check that out. Watch that. Um, And I think that will give you a little bit uh, of an understanding of what we're talking about. But I will I will address some of it here. The this the business and I've said it before, but the business of songwriting is declining so fast that probably in three years, it's not even going to be a profession. It's barely a profession right now. Um, The hopes of acquiring a publishing deal are slim to none, unless you've had major success. What's going on in the music business right now is nobody, how many times have I said it, guys? Um, Everybody wants to jump on a moving train, but nobody wants to shovel the coal to get it going. And whether you're talking about a new artist or whether you're talking about um, a songwriter, a new songwriter in town, nobody wants to put up that initial investment. Nobody wants to pay a new writer a draw when they don't have any guaranteed income coming in on the other end by ways of placements and cuts. So the best way to get a publishing deal in Nashville is to get a cut that is earning money or have a catalog of songs that are currently making and earning revenue that you can then schedule A, those songs, bring those songs into a publishing or co-publishing deal to where the publishing company that signed you is not really taking a chance. Whatever draw they're paying you, 
is already covered by the income that's generated from the songs that you've scheduled a or that you've brought in to the deal. Now, there are a lot of publishing companies. Uh, There are thousands of them here in Nashville that would probably be interested in doing a co-publishing deal uh, with a very talented songwriter um, for free. <laughs> That's the, they're not going to want to pay you a draw. You're, you're an unproven commodity. So they're not going to want to pay you a draw and invest in you. They're not going to want to shovel the coal. But who knows? Maybe if you keep contacting these people, and, and I said this in the video as well, this is, a, this is a long game, the music business, whether it's on the artist side or whether it is on the publishing side. It's a long game. Um, if you contact them and you don't hear anything back in a few weeks, then you need to contact them again. And when you don't hear anything back from them in that time period, then you contact them again. And then if, if you're running into a, a wall that seems like you can't even get any communication whatsoever, then try to research and find a different person at that publishing company to contact. Because obviously the person that you're reaching out to is, is just, they have no interest. Um, they get hundreds of emails a day from songwriters sending them songs. Hundreds, if not thousands. So you may be getting lost in the shuffle. Uh, You also may be stuck in somebody's junk mail in their spam folder. Um, Find out the phone number and call them and ask them what their submission policy is for new writers. That would be if you're where you are now and you said you've been reaching out, you've sent emails to 10 different companies and you've not heard anything back. Now's the time to call them. Listen here. I have a different outlook and approach to this business than most everybody. This comes and this comes from my disdain for A&R people at reps. They A&R reps at at record labels and publishing companies act so fucking put out when somebody contacts them about songs or about an artist or about pitching them songs or about uh, wanting to send them something, you know, to get a record deal or get a publishing deal. They act so put out like they are so higher and mightier than thou. And my thing is, this is your fucking job. If you are A&R at a record label or at a publishing company, your job is to find and recruit new talent that will be beneficial to the company. So if you are an A&R rep and you don't re- want to return Justin's email, fuck you, go do something else. If you are an A&R rep at a record label that doesn't like songwriters and doesn't like artists and doesn't like song pluggers, then go fucking do something else with your life. Go work at the drive-thru at Chick-fil-A because that's about, actually, you're probably not even qualified to do that. You are taking up space in an area in a business where we don't need you. We need people who are passionate about songwriters, passionate about artists, passionate about finding that next thing, finding that next talented artist or that next great talented songwriter. That is your job. So when I said it in the video, and I'll say it again here, do not hesitate to reach out to these people. Be persistent. Get aggressive. It is their fucking job. When you, when I hear that you've reached out and nobody's contacted you back, I would find out who the manager, general manager, or owner of that publishing company is. And I would be reaching out to them saying, I have been, I have been reaching out to you guys. Uh, I've sent 10 emails, no response. Is this how you run your business? And you may not hear anything back from that person either. Because a lot of the attitudes, uh, when you start dealing with people and the gatekeepers, the receptionists, the creative uh, people, the A&R staff, the song pluggers, when you start, that attitude is, is preset from the top down. But let your voice be heard. This is your dream. If this is what you want to do for a living and this is what you have passion for, then strap it on and go to fucking war. Let them know how you feel. I think this is bullshit. They're not signing you anyway, right? They haven't offered you a contract. They even fucking emailed you back. So fuck them. Let them know exactly what you think about them and exactly the way that you think they are conducting their business, that it's extremely unprofessional. And remind them that their business is predicated and built on finding new talent because a lot of their talent is getting fucking old. A lot of their talent is putting out shit that nobody fucking wants. 
So they're all supposedly out there looking for the next wave, the next thing. Well, remind them that you might very well be that next thing. And they have no clue that you are or no clue that you aren't until they give you a little bit of common fucking decency and return an email or return a phone call. There is nothing wrong with you getting aggressive in this business. If it's something you want that bad, then you got to be willing to fight for it. And in this business, you are going to have to fight tooth and nail all the way down to your bones. So get aggressive. Don't worry about pissing these people off. The people that you're going to piss off with just trying to contact them and and open a rapport with them, you wouldn't want to do business with those people anyway. Let's just face it. The cards in this business are stacked against you. The only way you have any chance to win is to push the fucking cards over. Be something they're not used to. Everybody in Nashville is, oh, I don't want to piss this person off. I, song pluggers all the time. Oh, I don't want to follow up an email. I don't want to upset them. Fuck them. It's their job to listen to records. It's their job to listen to songs for this artist. Why are you telling me that you're afraid to follow up on an email and find out if they've listened to this song or not? Well, I have a box account. I can tell if they listen and and they haven't listened yet or they have listened and they've not gotten back to me. And we're scared of upsetting or stepping on the toes. Meanwhile, they step on the toes and necks of everybody in the business. Be more like them. Stop being a pussy and start getting in the game. Put the gloves on and go to war. That's what you're going to have to be in order to be successful in this business. If you want to play by the business music business rules, they're playing by the rules they set. So you can't be Mr. Nice Guy down here and act like, oh, I'm not going to offend anybody. I don't I don't want fuck that. Get your shit in front of them. Chris Christopherson flew a fucking helicopter and landed it on Johnny Cash's front yard. I'd like to see a little more of that these days. But we're so afraid of getting blacklisted. We're so we can't say that. We can't talk about that person. Uh, Fuck them. They're not doing anything to help you anyway. So very long answer short, Jalen. It's time to pick up the phone. It's time to make a trip to Nashville and go knock on these doors. If they're not returning your emails, then start calling. If they don't return your phone calls, get on a fucking airplane, get in your car, get down to 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th Avenue and start knocking on doors. Be aggressive. There's nothing at all wrong with being aggressive. I think you'll find that you'll get further farther if you do. All right, next email. Uh, comes from Charles. Charles says, Hi, Steve. I'm a songwriter, but I'm not a performer. I'm a mediocre singer, but I do play, uh, play piano okay. I record myself playing my songs on the piano and singing via sound recorder on my Android phone. I don't want to make videos or get into elaborate music production. I do think some of my songs are very good and would sell uh, if we recorded them properly uh, by a good performer. Is there a way that I can sell my songs and make money given the, f- given the foregoing? If so, what should I do? Thank you for any help. Chuck. All right, Chuck. First of all, we do not sell songs in this business. Um, there, that, that is a, a very common misconception. We do not sell songs. We do not write songs. And then there's an exchange of money. And then now this person sings it. That is not how it's done. We get cuts in this business. So the songwriter writes the song. They go and they produce a demo that sounds exactly like what the artist is going to do to it. We make it a no brainer. The A&R people, the management, whoever we want to get that song to, to get it to the artist, he gets to the artist. The artist says, yep, I want to cut that song. The record label's okay with them cutting that song. And then they cut that song. You get paid when that song sells, when that song uh, gets streamed, you get paid via mechanical licensing. There is no monetary exchange for a song. So you, first of all, get, get it, kind of get it straight so that you have a good framework and parameter in your mind for how the business works. We do not sell songs at all. Um, we sell catalogs. Now, if you've been a very successful songwriter over a certain number of years and you want to go sell your rights to that catalog, then you can do that. Uh, but we do not sell songs. Second of all, I will tell you this, and, and, and I hate having to, to, always be the bearer of bad news when it comes to situations like this. If you want to get cuts as a songwriter, 
you are going to have to already do the heavy lifting and the hard work, and you are going to have to have the best sounding demos out there. Your demos, I've said this many times, your demos cannot afford to sound like demos. Your demos need to sound exactly like what belongs on the radio. Because when the A&R staff are listening, or the producer's listening, or the artist is listening, what they want to be able to do is take imagination out of it. They don't want to have to do all that work. What they want to do is go, I can hear myself singing this song. Or the a and is going, yeah, I can hear Kenny Chesney singing this song. It sounds like a Kenny Chesney song. So simply recording things into your Android phone and expecting something to come from those, it, the, the chance of that happening, you have a better chance of standing outside when there's no clouds in the sky and the sun is shining and getting struck by lightning. Has it ever happened before? I'm sure it's happened before. Well, I know that it's happened before. I've gotten cuts from uh, work tapes that I've done on my phone. However, I had a relationship with the artist. When I got done writing the song or me and my co-writer got done writing the song, I'm like, this is so good and it's so perfect for this artist. I just text message them and I send it over. But I had a relationship with the artist. If you are going about the business in a more traditional sense, you have got to put the money into and invest in your songs. And part of investing in your songs is having the highest quality, best sounding, belongs on the radio demo as humanly possible. And I produce songs for songwriters all over the world. That, that do this because they're like you. They don't, they play a little bit, but they don't really have the skill, but they know how important it is uh, for their demos to sound radio ready. Um, so I do that for songwriters all over the world. I'm not taking any more clients. Let me just make that very clear. I've got more than what I can handle, but there are, uh, I can refer you. If you want to follow up another email, I can forward you Uh, to some other producers I know and other people that would be very happy to help you and that will give you an amazing sounding demo for your songs. And you don't have to go overboard. My suggestion for this is pick your three, four, five strongest songs that that are current, that sound like what's on the radio right now. Uh, This is not a time to be unique. Let 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 me talk about this for just a second and clear something up. I always think it's a good time to be unique. If you're going to be the artist, if you want to just be a songwriter, now is not the time for you to be unique because nothing you turn on the radio in here or get onto Spotify, very little of it is unique from the mainstream artists. And let's face it, cuts on anything but a mainstream artist aren't going to make anybody any money. So you want to make sure that your songs fit in with the artists that you would like to have cut them or listen to them with that genre, with that style of music, you want to make sure that it's reflective of what's popular in the marketplace right now, whether it's a ballad, a mid-tempo, an up-tempo, no matter what it is, make sure that it is reflective of what is currently in the marketplace and popular right now. So it, it is possible for you to do, but you've got to follow the formula. You've got to follow the steps. And that is exactly what I would do is I would take my three, four, five best songs and I would even get some input on that because I will tell you this, uh, my, the, my most favorite songs that I've written, maybe one or two of them have gotten cut, but my most favorite songs I've ever written have never been cut. So it's a very subjective thing and you have to look at it openly, honestly, and with an open heart and an open mind to go, maybe I should get the advice from someone um, that can tell me. And it was the whole basis when I started the Artist Development Academy was to give that that access so that people could, Steve, you know, or Reggie Ham or, or whoever, take a listen to this. Tell me what you think. I think this is my best song. Here's three of my songs. I think this one's the best. 99% of the time, I always come back and go, but that that one's not the best. This other one down here is the best because it fits this, 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 and this. Because we get too close to our songs. They are all our children. We love every single one of them. Some of them we look and go, ah, you're not as special as this one. <laughs> but we love them all. We will defend them all. So getting some outside perspective, uh, getting an outside opinion on what those three to five songs should be, I think would be very valuable to you. Once you get that, then you create a budget 
and you have those five songs professionally recorded and demoed and with a great singer um, and the people that I can hook you up with, they, they will. It's a one stop shop. They can have all of it done for you. So they'll for, uh, fully produce the tracks. They'll they'll bring in a great phenomenal singer, whether it's a guy or a girl or a duet, and they will do everything mix and master and send all five of them back to you. And then you can start taking the steps of what we were telling Jalen earlier. And that is start contacting the publishing companies saying, hey, I'm Chuck. I'm a songwriter. Uh, I like what I'm doing. I think I offer something. I would love to get your opinion on my songs and see if we could come up with some sort of of an arrangement, whether it's a co-publishing deal or uh, you pitch my songs, you get one cut, you get, you know, 50% of the the royalty, whatever, whatever. There's so many different kinds of, there's no standard deal in Nashville in this business anymore. None. So it's all about what works for each of the parties. Always keep that in mind. But that would be my suggestion. You, you even alluded to it there in your email. And you, you said if you thought they sounded very good, that they could possibly sell if they were recorded properly by a good performer. Uh, the, the, the step that you're missing there, I believe, is the, is the demo step. The, the songs that you record straight into your Android phone are never going to get picked up or never going to get uh, to the level of a major artist uh, to hear them, love them, like them, want to cut them and then cut them and make them sound great. That is all on the job of the songwriter. It is now the job of the songwriter in the modern music business to be the producer, to be the artist, to be the vehicle, uh, to be the writer, uh, to be the plugger. It is all on you. It is 100% on your shoulders and it is a heavy weight. But if you're very serious about wanting to do this and you believe honestly, that you have the talent to do it. That's what it's going to take. So I wanted to, I, 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 I always feel like I'm busting people's balls and I am absolutely crushing people's dreams. I feel that way. I honestly do. And I don't like feeling that way, but I would rather be truthful with you guys. I would rather tell you exactly the way that it is without telling you, hell yeah, Chuck. Yeah, man, just record that shit on your Android and start sending it off to publishers. Who knows? I I can't do that. I just can't do that. Because I can promise you that if you did that and you send a voice memo to a publishing company, if you ever did hear back from them, it would be to tell you to never contact them again. It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't matter how good a demo recording is. It shouldn't matter whether it's on a voice memo on an iPhone or an Android. It shouldn't matter. A great song should always be able to be received. A great song you should always be able to see through. I will tell you, when I'm producing a project, I do not like fully produced songs. Even when I'm looking... um, at outside songs, when I contact other publishing companies and say, hey, I'm producing this artist, um, would you like to pitch me some songs for consideration? I always tell them, send me the most bare bones version that you have, because I don't I like hearing things guitar vocal, piano vocal, because then that allows me as the producer to arrange it in my mind without hearing it and getting married to something that I heard some other producer do. Because I'm not in the business of, of being a replicant. I do not want to replicate what somebody has else, has else has done. I want to put my own stamp on it because that's my creativity. That's my ownership of it. That's me putting my special sauce on it. That sounded wrong, but we'll go with it. So I'm rare in that. I, I, I don't like listening to fully produced demos. I like guitar vocals, but I'm very rare in that. So if you want to fit in the mainstream of how the current business is running, you want to make sure that you've got great demos, that those demos sound like they belong on the radio already. And that's square one. Uh, if it's anything less than that, the chances of you getting that song heard by anybody that has any sway or decision-making ability is less than zero. It honestly is. And again, I I don't, I don't want to crush or, or destroy anybody's dreams. It's just the way that it is. And I would rather, you know, that and adjust your, your plan and adjust your strategy to be able to come at this business in a way that's appropriate. uh, than to send you spinning in circles and having you, record things on your Android and send them to send them to 
publishing companies or, or record labels. So anyway, I enjoy doing this. I love answering your questions. So Chuck, uh, Jalen, and who else? Justin. I appreciate you guys writing in. I selected, again, I selected these questions because um, I get uh, there, I get a lot of emails that pertain to a lot of these same things. So I'm there. There were thank you for everybody that sends in a message. By the way, if you if you want to ask a question again, go to thestevefreeman dot com and shoot me a message. Ask me a question. I will be happy to answer it right here on the podcast. So do that. Don't ever hesitate to ask me a question, and then listen to the podcast. Sometimes I I, I try as min, much as I can to email you back and say, Hey, thanks for the question. I'll answer it on the podcast. Um, and then if it requires more than that, I try to, to respond as in in as much detail as I possibly can and have time for. So keep the questions coming. I love it. We'll do this from time to time. We've got some great episodes coming up. I told you at the top of the show next week, Seattle Seahawks tight end, Jacob Hollister will be joining us. We're going to talk football. We're going to talk music. We're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about a lot with one of the brightest tight end stars in the NFL for the Seattle Seahawks. That's going to be great. Plus, we've got some other great guests, some other great shows coming up, and we'll do this more often, too. We'll answer your questions. As always, links to anything that I talked about that you guys need to know or need to find, all of those links can be found in the show notes section of this podcast. You can also find them at thestevefreeman.com. Once you get there, there's a little tab. Little little thing. It says show notes. You click on it and it's right there. You can find all of them. You can find links to our amazing podcast sponsors, which keeps which keeps this thing going. I'm not going to do it for free. <laughs> Although a lot of times I feel like I am doing it for free, but I'm not doing it for free. But I would. I did it for free for two years. So that's how much I love you guys. But while you're there, please do check out Performance Inspired, pi-nutrition.com. Start living a more healthy, active lifestyle. Get inspired today. Or if you really want, a lot of what I've talked about today are covered in courses at the Artist Development Academy, like in detail, really in detail. So if you really want to get in detail and you really want to learn more, you want to know uh, how to do a lot of this stuff and approach the business properly, go to artistdevelopmentacademy.com and sign up to become an all access member. Get the get access to the entire existing online course library. Plus, you get a brand new course every single month. And I promise you that it's going to help you. Plus, I told you to ask for feedback. Our members at the Artist Development Academy get access to the members only forum where you can post your work and me other hit songwriters, producers, engineers, we get on there and we'll, we'll listen to those and we'll give you our feedback. And trust me, in Nashville, there are a lot of fucking people that charge a lot of money to do that. And I think it's fucking bullshit. I really do. I, it really upsets me. I've been seeing a lot of songwriters that aren't getting cuts anymore, posting on Facebook that they're now opening up a service where you can pay to write with them or you can pay them to give you critiques on your songs. I think that's such bullshit. Uh, but anyway... We, that's a part of your membership with the Artist Development Academy. And it's not $200 a song, $250 a song. It's $19 a month and you get everything. So go check it out, artistdevelopmentacademy.com. Don't forget, guys, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast no matter where you're listening. But if you're listening on iTunes and app or Apple Podcast, leave us five stars and leave a written review. Guys, until next time, keep being creative. Keep pressing the boundaries, and there is nothing wrong with being independent. See you in the next episode. Thanks for joining us for the Steve Freeman Podcast. Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and follow Steve on social media at, at the Steve Freeman. 